Welcome back everyone, Z21 Crisis here, and today we're playing some more Porsche Unleashed, Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed, or Porsche 2000, I prefer Porsche Unleashed for now. Anyway, last time around we did the 356 challenge in 1950 with, I was going to say the original 356, but there is another, another 356, which is the 356 numero uno, or number one, or I'm not sure how it is in German, but that is a version of the 356 that is not in this version of Porsche Unleashed, but if memory serves, it is on the PlayStation version of Porsche Unleashed. And on the intro, of course, because we did saw that uh, 356 uh, number uno, or number one, or however it is in German. Anyway, um, and the thing that we left this off is that the fact that it is 1956 and there are a whole bunch of new cars that are available. There are the 356A in 1.3 and 1.6 liter engine, as well as some super versions which are faster. I made the calculations and to buy every single one of them, which is exactly what I'm supposed to do, I need to have about 125,000 credits. 125,000, 100 to be specific. And I just have 13,000. How am I supposed to make that much money? One way, of course, will be to re-enter the 356 uh, challenge, but that only pays 5,000 per, like, per, per event. Like, that's too, too, that's not enough money. Instead, we're gonna use one of the other things that are available in this game, the used car section. What is a used car section? Simple. Here's a ruined Porsche. It's very damaged. It looks very sad. Here is the price. To buy this thing, we will have to spend about 10, uh, we will have to spend 10,849. There are three of them, three damaged cars we could buy. Used cars, I mean. Let's buy this one, the 10,589 uh, 356. This is a 356 uh, 1.3 liter coupe from 1951. Let's buy this one. We're left with 2,688 credits. What do we do with this thing? We repair it. It will cost us 2,343 credits to repair this thing, but let's look a bit deeper into this thing. There are plenty of components that are damaged, like for example, these components are damaged, we can fix them. With all of these components fixed. But the brakes, the brakes are over 50%. If we were to repair them, it will cost us 318. If we replace them, it will cost us 204. We just save 100 credits. We fix this, the standard rogue springs, they're pretty damaged, we could repair them, will cost us 319, instead we're gonna replace them. Cost us 163, it's cheaper. So we repair every component, just cost us 2000 to repair this thing. And now it looks pretty serviceable, it looks pretty nice. We can sell this thing. Someone comes and offers us the asking price we have. At times they can offer less. If we ask for too much money, we say yes. We have made cash. You can be a used car salesman in this game and it gives you a whole bunch of money. That's our main money-making strategy in this game. Just sell the cars that are used, that are completely destroyed. We're gonna do that another one, let's see. It's of course, there's still this one here. Let's, let's do this one. 4,000 credits we have, but I'm pretty sure we can repair this thing with the credits we have. Um, let's see. Let's find... This can be replaced. This can be replaced. Anything else can be replaced. The exhaust. Everything else is under 40, so let's accept all of this. Go back to repair and repair everything that remains. This can be sold for about 15,500 credits. There we go. We made about 3,000 credits with this one. So that's the way you make money in this game. You just sell a whole bunch of used Porsche by fixing them, of course. Well, I think that's the mission that I have right now. I will make 125,000 just by selling all fixed cars. We have to make 125,000 to buy every single car. Not much more because I'm not planning on upgrading our new 356A or new any of our new 356A because um, it's unnecessary, I don't need it. But first, let's um, let's make some cash. So we'll come back to you when I made enough cash to finance our 356 A's. 
Okay, it took me quite a while. I'm not sure how long it actually took or how many cars he had to sell. But we made it to 135,000, which is plenty cash. And that is just enough cash to be able to afford every single version of the 356A. 356, 356A, every single one of them. The 1.3 liter version and the 1.6 liter version. This version I want to buy just because I can, I want to buy it in silver, silver-ish at least, uh, red interior because of course I need to buy it, <clears throat> dang it, but stay on the color I selected, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Well, anyway, um, <clears throat> what can I tell you about the 356A while I'm buying each and every one of these cars? Well, originally the 356, I called it the original, I called it a luxury beetle. It's more of a sporty beetle in that regard, because <clears throat> it took some components from the Volkswagen Beetle, which uh, Ferdinand Porsche Sr., the, own, the founder of the company, did design. Uh, no, don't do that. But the designer of the 356A, of the 356, was... Ferdinand Porsche Jr. and he designed this thing, took some components from the original Beetle, the, 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 the Type 1, which is why I called it a luxury Beetle, but it's more of a sporty Beetle instead of a luxury Beetle. Go, and we made it back to the start. <clears throat> so we have every single 356A available in the new car section and the one we're gonna be using is the 356A Super Speedster which I'm gonna dislike a bit but um, it's the one I'm gonna use why we're gonna use that one first let's go to car compare 356 Speedster we're comparing the Speedster to say hmm Compare it to the standard Speedster. More acceleration, more top speed, braking is better, handling is better. What about the Super Cabriolet? Eh, it's pretty similar, handling is a bit better on the Super Speedster, so we're gonna stay on the Super Speedster. Right, what's the problem with the Super Speedster? Why am I annoyed of the fact that I'm gonna use it? Um, in, ca in car view, it's not great. You're gonna see how bad it is when we actually get there, but for now, do the usual setup and some toe in and some brake balance forward and of course no downforce because it is unnecessary for this car. I want to see what kind of upgrades this car has. Please lower the downforce. I want to see what kind of upgrades this car has because um, some of the older 356s did have some upgrades for like uh, improved engine. Like there is no well, there is an improved engine which. It's basically an engine swap. You can give them a 1.5 liter engine instead of the 1.3 liter engine they usually have. Let's see what kind of upgrades this car has. Uh, let's see. Flywheel, carburetor, air filter. There's the engine. That's the base engine of the 356A, the 1.6 liter version. Gearboxes. Oh yeah. <clears throat> There's fiberglass hood and fiberglass core panel. Um... Fiberglass will reduce the weight of the car, which is good, but it's a performance upgrade, so I'm not gonna get it just yet, even though I want it. Um, sway bar does reduce the roll, which is good. I don't think I'm gonna buy that just yet. I don't think it's necessary. I just did my whole set of thing. So there's that. Now what am I supposed to do? I need to check a little document I have, where I see if, I, if there's anything else I need to prepare, and if not, well, we'll get into racing. Well, I just discovered something new about my recording software. So I'm using Mirrorless Action, which uh, has been pretty good. Uh, for some time, I replaced it with Riva Tuner Service uh, Statistics Server, which also allows me to record. But in the end, I went back to uh, Action. I just discovered something, and this, if I start a recording at say 6, uh, 640 by 480p, like. The resolution that this thing is at right now, 640 by 480, and I go to a different resolution like 
uh, say 10, 1024 by 768, like the actual races I do, uh, it will not record at 1024. It will actually try to keep recording at 640 by 480p, which I discovered after I did all of the races with the 356A and it recorded everything at 480p. So that means I'm gonna have to record everything again. That explains why the times completed on the uh, the times completed on the 356A cup is at one. So I'm gonna have to do everything again. So my car of choice will of course be this 356A Super Speedster, which I think I explained in the previous episode. It's been a while in the previous part of the uh, campaign. It's been a while since I did uh, this recording, so I'm a bit lost. Anyway, um, yeah, that's why I have to record this part again. So now, I'm gonna jump into race, I stop the recording, then I start it again, as well, Three, as hopefully it's visible then. Two, uh, here's the problem one, with go. the 356A Spitzer and why I don't want to use it that much. Um, I can't see a damn thing. Like, I can't see, well, I can't see. It's just that I can't see much over this gigantic steering wheel. Let's uh, not take the shortcut. But the shortcuts tend to be pretty terrible, so do not take them. Okay, I think there's someone ahead, yeah. Uh, I'm using the brakes to... Sorry. I'm using the brakes to wobble the car forward and being able to see. That's one of the advantages of having uh, the stupidly soft suspensions that these cars have, is that the brakes are pretty good. Uh, the, the, the suspension is so soft that you can wobble the car forward to be able to see what's directly ahead of you. Here's Dylan. Bye, Dylan. I'm going to run this race with this camera angle and then switch back to a more reasonable camera angle, because this thing is impossible. Okay, we got it. Anyway, so what's the difference between the 356 and the 356A? First of all, uh, different compression ratio on the engine. Uh, thank you, Erwin. Different compression ratio, which means the engine is a bit more powerful, also I think there are materials and stuff. Uh, the wind, uh, the, wind. Uh, the, the rear windshield is a bit different. If memory serves on the standard 356, it is a two-piece windshield. In this case, it is a one-piece. Although, um, this is a convertible, so maybe uh, it's not that effective. It's not that, like, that representative, like, there. Uh, what else? Some aerodynamic changes, like a, a few changes on the on the look of the car, which affect the aerodynamics, so they're a bit better. And the audio is glitching for whatever reason. It shouldn't do that. There's a bit of a shortcut. Let me show you. Come on. It's turn, turn. You have all the rain tires. You can do this. Inside this little mansion's. I guess this is garage or I don't know the cellar. It's something. It's a, it's a. I guess you can call it a shortcut so you can take that corner wider. The only issue you have to take this corner tighter, but it works out in the long run. It's fine. Yeah, that's a 356A. It is a bit better. It is better performing than the 356, it's an evolution of the 356, which I previously called the Luxury uh, Beetle. That is an incorrect assessment, it's actually a sports beetle. It, the, the 356 gives you some components from the Beetle, mostly the rear suspension, and I think the engine is the same, but like the suspension was pretty, pretty similar between the 356 and the Beetle. But, at the uh, when we got the 356A, it's mostly unique stuff. Like they don't, sh uh, this thing doesn't share anything with the with the Beetle. The music is lagging for whatever reason. It, 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 it's sounding a bit terrible at, at times. Uh, probably because of the 280 FPS, but throw the brakes. Okay, at the very least here I can see. Probably because of the 280 FPS, but uh, it definitely shouldn't be doing that. Breaks a bit. We have a substantial lead, so I don't need to like rush through everything right now. And just take it calmly. This should be the final few corners of this place. 
We're nearly there, don't worry, we will get there. One turn, thank you. Brakes. We are go up here. I will need to see how much that little bump and run did, uh, how much damage it did to my car. In the little graphic up there, I think there's some damage to the left, uh, front left and front right sides of the car, but I am not completely sure. There we go, we made it to the end. There we go. And now I can escape that silly camera. You won the race. That's that that's a big achievement that I have made. You're the tournament leader. Leading the tournament, of course, and here's a bunch of records that we will not get anywhere close to beating until we have actual fast cars, which we will not get until way later into this campaign. So anyway, let's go to the menu. We are back here, so next is into Normandy, but first things first, I need to... I am impressed that this car suffered no damage despite doing a NASCAR bump and run to an opponent. Not at full speed, of course, but I mean, it was a bump and run. Like, that usually damages cars. But anyway, let's go into Normandy, let's, uh, let's win this tournament than 1024 by 768 so you know at the actual resolution Three, two, and now let's switch one, to the outside camera you're probably here because you want to look at these nice portions right to shift Dylan's gonna come up and overtake me he had a bird start let's try to not touch him there we go there we go now we're running the AI uses the default setup, I think, so my setup with uh, zero downforce is definitely uh, perhaps overpowered. Maybe I should start using the default setup on future episodes. But I uh, like. I thought that just not upgrading the car would be enough, but it seems that using the default setup might be a bit of a better, better balance. Heck, maybe even. Using the, the, the custom suspension setup and tires, but jacking up full downwards because one of the obvious advantages we have is that we have a whole bunch of top speed, which we're gonna get away from them uh, during this straight. And we have a whole bunch of top speed that we can use. Uh, like I mentioned in previous episodes, uh, the only thing downforce does is prevent you from uh, flying off jumps. It doesn't actually give you more grip. Please, grip up. It doesn't actually give you more grip. It just slows you down. And of course prevents you from flying up. At least I haven't noticed that it gives you more grip, so there's that. Or maybe rear down for us give you grip, but front down for us doesn't. I don't know. There's... It's, it's, it's an old game. It has all physics. Just, just it happens go down here and take the shortcut because in the previous episode I tried to show you something but uh, it didn't work out. There's some people here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Anyway, um, this is a simple physics engine that, well, it's kind of advanced but it is pretty simple in the long run. Don't damage anything good. <laughs> okay, it's fine. In the, in the end, it's an actually simple physics engine. It's not like, I don't know, R factor. I'm trying to think something very accurate, and R factor is not very accurate. Um, it's not like EA's F1 games that use ISI engine, and that is a pretty complex engine. This is like more simplified. It has plenty of suspension work, as you can see, but it's not like super advanced. Again, no shortcut because it is unnecessary, and we have a substantial lead over the field yet again. So this just turned out to be a, 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 a nice, calm Sunday drive. It's actually Saturday over here, but you know what I mean. No damage there, good. Let's take a bit of a cut here. Everything is fine. Gotta wonder what? Uh, in what color will I, will I buy the next cards in this game? 
burning the, the, the left front. It's fine. There's, again, simple engine. There's not like tire temperatures or tire. There's actually tire wear, but that if you damage the car. There's no like tire temperatures I need to worry about, so I can just be as aggressive on the wheel as I want. If you don't turn too much, you will understeer, so yeah. It, it, it simulates that part of car performance fairly realistically. That didn't damage the car, don't worry. Everything is fine. We are about to get to the to the goal here. Been a pretty relaxing drive, yeah, and in next episodes I need to I'm gonna keep the tire pressure high and the uh, suspension settings as I'm running them right now, but I'm gonna increase it down for season max. There we go. Easy win. Park the car. I didn't hit the wall, so there's no damage on my end. Good. You place first. Place first. I nearly get the lead, uh, the lead stolen from me at the beginning, but everything's fine. You have won the tournament. You're ready to challenge the next tournament. I think I am ready this time to uh, go to the next turn. Because I did record everything properly this time around. Again, times that we will not get close to until we get actually modern cars, at least for this game stuff. Anyway, back to the menu. And here we are back. So, that's the second time I actually do this cup. So, hopefully this one sticks. Hopefully I have videos that have actually decent enough resolution to watch. And did I do anything to the 356A? Nope, completely pristine. I made some extra cash and that's gonna be needed to buy uh, the next generation of cars, which are the 356Bs. Is it the 356Bs that I have to get? Yeah, 356Bs. But those cars will be uh, will be seen in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. You you are a pretty smart person. You know what to do uh, when it comes to the buttons and the common designation designated section down there. Um, you're pretty smart. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one.